Hey guys, welcome back to Sapper Steel Forge. Uh, we're gonna do something different this week. I say that every week, don't I? Oh, this week we're talking about something that's been on a lot of people's minds for the past few years. The, these <laughs> survival knives. Now, I'm not talking about that one at the flea market. We all know that, you know, that from that original Rambo movie. We're gonna get to that one. We're going to have some fun with that one, because what a piece of garbage that thing was. No, I'm talking about something somehow worse. It's these plain flat piece of metal with some paracord, and boy, I'm saying that with air quotes for a reason, wrapped around the handle. They're bulky, they're awful, they, they, they don't have real paracord, this stuff's pretty much useless. Or at least a large percentage of the time. Now, if you buy a quality one from a quality manufacturer, okay. But it, the the concept of of having everything survival in one tool is not always necessarily a great thing. Your knife is a survival tool. Don't get me wrong. I make a number of really good ones. But if you if everything you need is is on your knife. And the first thing you have to do is take apart your knife, your survival tool, in order to use these tools. Now you've made your knife useless. If I can't grip my knife to use it because I've removed the handle to use the handle to put up a tent. I, I have a tent, but now I don't have a knife. That's not... That's pointless. What I do is carry a good knife and separate stuff now we're gonna get into it today we have a set that came in a pair now i'm holding on like this for a specific reason because on this side is the manufacturer's mark i'm not going to show you all that because that would be wrong but just to understand this is some standard flea market crap so let's start with the little one. Well, actually, what I'm going to start with is let's talk about that paracord again. Now, I've already unwrapped the paracord. And again, cannot stress how much I am saying that with air quotes because this trash is not paracord. <sighs> Number one, um, see, there is no, there's no core. The paracord, true paracord, has seven filaments inside it. That's what makes it able to hold up to 550 pounds. Is in the military, we call it 550 cord. If you want good survival stuff, actual 550 cord is what you need. This is cheap junk. This resembles the piece that goes around the 550 cord. But it is hollow, it is weak, it is easily cut, it is, I could probably break that, it, it's all kinked up. Th this is useless. In a survival situation, the the advantage to the, uh, the 550 cord is that I can remove one of the filaments and I can make a fishing line, or I can just use the filaments themselves for like putting up a tent or something because they'll hold so much weight on their own and then i got more rope for more stuff i can you know take it take apart a, a tent length of 550 cord and i've got the filaments plus the outer casing to do everything i need to do with it this doesn't have that the, this is but it's being passed off as the real thing and and that's bad so this is this is trash. Uh, I I play with the cats with it. That's that's all that's good for you. This is the genuine thing. Uh, you can tell. You can kind of see here where I've had to melt the end to keep the cores from unwinding. This is genuine 550 cord. This is not. They don't even look so. I mean, aside from the color. This is puffed up and round. That's because it's got a core inside there. This is some knitted crap. Yeah. So, 
First things first, if you're buying it because it's got that 550 cord wrap and it ain't got 550 cord, then it's bad. And hey again guys, we had a little breakdown in the middle of the intro due to some storms and some power outages. So it's the next day, but we're going to try and pick up where we left off. We were talking about these here knives. I was playing with it a little bit, hoping the power would come on. Uh, so what we got here is it is a full tang. It, it is a solid piece of metal. So, I mean, it, it's decent like that. Uh, we already talked about the uh, 550 cord wrap, which is just awful. Uh... <laughs> It's just, a real 550 cord wrap isn't that bad, but I, I don't care for it myself just because it means you have to take apart your knife and make it uncomfortable in order to use your 550 cord. It's better just to have 550 cord with you at all times. I mean, you know, a little Altoids 10, uh, you know, you can keep a, a decent survival kit inside of one of them in your pocket. Don't have to take your knife apart. All right, so moving on to the rest of this knife. One of the big problems is, is this tang. Look at the size of this thing. time I wrap my hand around it, it, it's already digging into my fingers. And it's very uncomfortable. It, you, you put in, time you put some, some actual 550 cord and give it some, you know, thickness to, to fit your hand, it's just too darn big. And, and it's rectangle. It, it's just a big old blob here. So what we're going to do to make this workable is we're going to take this to the grinder and we're going to reshape this hand, okay? Um, debating on a couple of things for the handle, but I think with this one, we're going to go back to the wrap, but instead of, uh, you know, that 550 cord where you're going to unwind it and stuff, we're going to use some leather and we're going to permanently attach it. It'll give it that nice survival feel. It'll be nice and, and thick. It'll hold to the hand. We're going to contour it so it'll, it'll fit right in the hand. And then, uh, you know, it, it'll give it some nice grip. I'd rather have something to a good solid knife. Frankly, for a survival situation, I think this thing's a little bit small, a little bit light. Um, it, 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 there's not a lot of wait there for chopping. If I need to bring down some sapling or something, you know, chop up a little firewood to make a little fire, I'd, I'd really have a hard time with this thing here. It just doesn't have any of that forward weight. And right, now, I say right now, that handle is super uncomfortable. So, we're going to do what we can with it. I, was, I can't add weight. It's just the way it is. But we're, we're going to make that handle better. Now, now we get even worse. The problem I have when people make sets of, of a big knife and a small knife is they seem to think that just because I'm, I want a smaller blade, that my hand shrunk too. Look at this thing. I'm, I'm holding it with like three fingers. <laughs> I, I, I can't do squat with this. I mean, not comfortably. You can kind of hold it like this and do some close-up skinning work, but hey, you know what would be even better than that? A decent skinning knife with a full handle that you can grip in a lot of different ways and get the job done. Of course, neither one of these are sharp, but we'll fix that. So, <clears throat> what I think I'm going to do with this one here, we, we've got, you know, a hole to, it drilled here. So, I think I'm going to take this down to a stick tang, and we're going to add a proper handle. We'll, we'll put a wooden handle on here, uh, like a hidden tang style, and actually extend the... Uh, grip out and make this worthwhile or at least as worthwhile as we can um, so what we're gonna do is uh like i said we're gonna take this big one here and we're gonna recontour it we're gonna put a finger well here a little bit of a palm swell and then make that fit in the hand a lot better than it does now and then with this one here we'll take it down to a stick tang and put a proper handle on there and uh that's going to be about it. So it's not going to be a lot this week. I say, uh, still kind of busy. School's just finished up for the semester. And now I am working on uh, trying to, uh, you know, finishing up my internship and uh, working on getting another one. 
and try to get my certification exams out of the way. So I'm a lot of times studying right now. So I don't have a ton of time right now. I've got other things going on and stuff. And so we're, we're kind of doing a, an easy one this week. But we, we we got some other stuff in the works. We're going to be forging out stuff. So no worries on that end. We, we'll, we'll get back to forging. Uh, we'll see where all this, this channel goes. You know, who knows what all we're going to do. But, uh, yeah, so stick around. We're going to turn these into proper knives, and uh, hopefully they'll be a lot better. I said this is going to be a simple one. I think that makes all the difference in the world. Fits in the hand properly now. Pinky slides in here. It's not slipping anywhere. The guard works better because my finger sits down on the finger well. Whatever I need to do with this knife, now I can kind of do it. You know, uh, the knife I would take from my collection for uh, you know being outdoors in the woodsman it's either going to be one of my heavier skinning knives or the nine inch woodsman bow it's made just for that if i think i'm going to be chopping something i'll take my camp axe with me uh, you know it, it's easy to carry on a belt or on a backpack that's my idea of, of a good survival tool and, and, and not just mine you know there, there are plenty out there uh, you know it's not self-promotion there, there are plenty out there that, that work way better than this. Lot, lots of really good tools out there. You know, find the one that works for you. But th this, this mess, th this is, this is sort of quality. Um, I'm gonna be honest. The lack of sparks when when I was grinding it uh, concerns me. I, I don't. I just got some real concerns about the quality of the steel. I don't think it's a good quality steel. I think it's cheap, maybe uh, medium to mild. So I don't think it's going to hold an edge very well either. It, it, it doesn't have one now, to be sure. But uh, hey, we're going to work with what we got. This is not the ideal. But um, yeah, so from here, uh, I'm going to add a handle to it. We're gonna, I'm thinking about using some leather wrap. Maybe. A, Maybe I'll go with a brown, you know, kind of set it off a little bit. And, uh, yeah, we're just going to do a nice little leather wrap on it. And uh, that should make it easier to grip. A little epoxy, it make it grip nice and strong. And uh, then we'll get started on the little one.
went pretty well. Uh, I think that uh, leather handle on there will be a lot more comfortable. Certainly the, the way it's contoured now will be a lot better. So next we're gonna move on to this little thing here. Now this one's gonna get a little more complicated because I'm gonna grind this all the way down to a stick tang. We'll drill some holes and uh, do some sort of a wood handle. Uh, I'm not sure, I'm thinking maybe stacked. I, I love stacked wood, uh, with, especially with the leather. I just think it's really pretty. But, you know, everybody likes what they like. So uh, uh, we'll see. I, I'm not sure yet. But uh, let's get started on the ground. Unfortunately, as I, I gotta go get ready for work. Yay, customers. Uh, but we got this down to a, a decent little stick tang. Leave those holes alone. I'll use them for a pinhole. And uh, yeah, th this is gonna work. Now we'll, we'll slot up some wood and slide it on there and we'll epoxy it probably tomorrow, I think. I may have time for it tomorrow. <laughs> Tomorrow's pretty busy too. I uh, got two VA appointments and work, so we, we're balancing some stuff these days. But uh, if not, if not tomorrow, then Friday, and we'll just get the the video out late. But we're, we'll we'll give it a try. I, I should heck, maybe I can get it done tonight after work. Anyways, um, yeah. So this is gonna work. The uh, the other one's gonna have the leather handle, so they're they're gonna be nice. They're not gonna look like a match set, but they're also not gonna have this this ridiculous nonsense on them. They're gonna look like proper knives. So uh, yeah, we'll get started on it again later.
so I'm out here making noise all night, but I just wanted to finish this up. It, it's not that late. I mean, it's, it's getting on bedtime, but I'm old. So what we've got here is a stack, wood and leather, and then we'll pin it through one of those holes. So last thing I'm gonna do is take it outside. We're gonna glue it up and that, that's gonna be it for tonight. All right, guys, so we got the glue up done. I, I didn't bother to take the camera out there. It's dark. Uh, I got one little light. I could see what I was doing, but probably you wasn't going to see it. It's fine. It's glue. You, you've seen me do it before. Uh, quick tip, though, for anyone looking to get into this, the leather stacked handles are really nice, right? And we've seen it done on that, that show that we all love. But one thing that, that really, you got to use a lot of epoxy. If you're going to do leather on a handle, you want to get the epoxy down into the grain of the leather because you want to harden the leather. It, it's not just about gluing the leather together. It's about getting the epoxy into the leather and creating a, a very hard leather. Uh, it, it should be as hard as wood or, or harder when it's set. All right, but uh, we'll come out here tomorrow morning and uh, shape the handle and uh, finish it up. So we finished grinding it out and polishing it. And it see, it, it, it looks all right. It's got some really neat little stripes in there. It's a way better handle. It, it's a lot more comfortable. It fits in my hand now. And I could use this for whittling or whatever I need to in the wild. But now we're gonna talk about just finishing. Uh, I've seen a few finishes and all, but, but uh, you know, finishing the wood and making it look really nice really isn't that difficult. I know there's a lot, a billion different ways to do it. Everybody's got their way. I got mine too. <laughs> um, so what we've got here is a, it's a red oak, some just black leather. And then down here at the bottom is crepe myrtle. Now crepe myrtle is a very nice, very strong wood, 
But in my opinion, it's kind of plain. It just, uh, it, it looks pale. You, you don't really see the grain pop out until you do a little something with it. So all we're gonna do is a very simple technique. We're gonna char it a little bit. We're not gonna char it a whole lot because we're actually gonna give it kind of a triple color thing. So we're just gonna take a torch and just gonna apply it to the very end here. Not gonna turn it up very, very high because we, we don't want it to like completely blacken. Turn it up just a touch so we're not here all month. And all we're looking for is to darken the end of some. You're gonna see some of the the black coming up. It, it's starting to burn a little bit in places. That's fine. We just want the very end of it to, to get darkened. All right. And, and that that's all we're looking for out of that. And as you can see, that already added some some character to it. It gives it a little something. Makes it look a little older, a little a little nicer in my opinion. So then what I'm gonna do is take this stain here, and this is honey covered stain. It's a medium darkness, it, it's not particularly dark, and I'm just gonna take a little bit of it, and I'm gonna go from where I charred it to about halfway up. And I don't wanna do the whole thing, because like I said, we're going to do some triple color sort of thing. So once the stain's on there, just take the clean part here and just wipe off the excess. You see, the stained part really, really, really has a lot of character. Now you can really see that green popping out. And, and that just looks nice. So what we're going to do to finish it off, let me close this up. Now I've got a paste wax. Now I used uh, several different paste waxes. Uh, one of which I don't mind mentioning anymore because unfortunately they don't make it anymore. And that's your standard Johnson's paste wax. They just quit making it. It's, uh, you can get it still pretty much everywhere. It ain't nobody here in and out. I've had this can for a few years and uh, yeah. Use it all the time and it's nowhere near done. But uh, today I've got a, a different wax and I'm not gonna show you the brand of it. But this wax is, it's only a little bit different in that this wax has a stain inside of it and it is a mahogany. So what I'm gonna do, and it just makes for a, so it kind of stains the wood as we're waxing it. So I'm just gonna take some of this uh, wax. And you can see that this wax is very dark on its own. And then I'm gonna wax the entire thing. And you wanna get, make sure you get the leather too because it's, it's important to make sure you, you wanna waterproof and protect the entire handle. That's what the wax is really about. Sure, it makes everything look shiny and nice, but it's really about protecting the wood and keeping everything nice. Now, because it's got that darker stain inside the, the wax, it just darkens it all up. And see, now you can see, you know, a, a difference between the char and where the honey was and just the mahogany wax, and it gives it that triple color going down into that really nice red oak that now just pops and so uh, once we get the first coat of wax on there we'll let that dry for just a second and we'll just go right ahead and go straight into the second coat and don't worry if you get a bit on the blade uh, paste wax sure ain't gonna hurt nothing on the blade now the only time i don't use standard paste wax is if i'm using making something for someone that i think may come in contact with food uh, you know, like, like a kitchen knife of any sort, or some of the survival knives, uh, like, like uh, the blacksmith's knives. People tell me they, you know, they're 
going to like Renfest and they're going to feast with it, okay, well, I, I'm not going to, you know, seal it with paste wax. Uh, most paste wax would be fine, but uh, what you can do is make your own paste wax out of beeswax and mineral oil. Just pick up both at your local hardware store. It's not a big deal. Uh, all you got to do is just take and melt your, your beeswax down and add about a 2 to 1 ratio with the uh, the mineral oil. And then let that cool. And it just it just softens it up. It, it's, of course, food safe. Uh, you get the same mineral oil you use for, like, uh, cutting boards and stuff like that perfectly food safe and then you can wipe it right onto the with the wood or, or wood and the, the blade and keep them safe from the weather and, and whatnot with, without a problem so that's going to be it for this uh this set of knives here see this one looks a lot better than it did before i mean that is just nice now uh what i might do is make this a two-parter and next week go back and forge a set like this and, and show you the differences go back show you this one one more time uh i said uh you know it, it came out nice it it looks better it feels better it, it's way more contoured to my hand that that leather gives you that grip and, and i mean if i wanted to do some chopping with this thing i mean i would it feel good in the hand and i got the lanyard i could certainly keep a hold of the knife now that that's not a problem but, 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 so they look better. They're far improved from what they were. And uh, we, we're going to surprise them and, you know, have some fun with it. Anyways, uh, so thank you ever so much for watching, guys. I appreciate all of you. Uh, uh, you know, like, subscribe, all that YouTube stuff. Come check us out on TikTok. Uh, <laughs> I, I've been doing a lot more of the, uh, the short form contents, uh, messing with my little girl, keep telling her dad jokes. If, if you like that sort of thing, I've got like five or six of them now. But uh, anyways, uh, you know, check out the Etsy shop. We're, we're constantly making new stuff. We, we've got more stuff working. We, we got a storefront coming up and whatnot. But uh, thanks again, and uh, y'all take care.